So what I'm looking for mostly at this point is just how does the overall composition flow? And I'm, I'm less important about, or I mean less concerned about any of the details. You know, I may start to think about stuff like, you know, how the space around Peter's cottage starts to support what's going on here. But almost before I even want to do that, I want to think about how is the space being divided up. So before I start getting into any details, I want to think about how large should his cottage be compared to the other space. I don't want everything to be even because then it has equal weight. So I'll probably go in here and I'm going to make it so that this stuff is even more elevated and even more off limits. And I'm just going to make it so that this city is just this small, distant thing. I'm going to just make it a little bit darker. I have a question you have to answer, honestly. Yeah. Did you purposely use golden ratio there? Uh, so I've been, I've been trying for a long time to get the golden ratio in my thoughts and in my, like I, I use the word all the time, or in getting it into your fingers. I think it's something that my wife talks about when she's learning to play the piano that like after you practice a piece enough it just is part of your fingers and then if you want to pick it up and play it again later it's just there right or it comes more naturally and that's what you want to do with stuff like golden ratio and rhythm and stuff like that I'm not very good with rhythm I need to practice a lot more on that but yeah so when I'm thinking my brain just kind of automatically goes there now because I'm I'm pushing so hard to do that so I would try to memorize the golden ratio if you can because I think it will be useful useful to have it memorized so I'm just pulling in a second color here just as a way to kind of define the space a little bit more I'm just almost more than anything else just letting it be evolved uh, not be evolved but evolve as I go right so I'm thinking of something that feels kind of sunken and like, you know, it's kind of re recessed into the wall. Like it's, um, what I want to get is this idea of something that's afraid to explore outside. So I'm taking the idea of pessimism and just like, you know, all hope is lost. We're going to continue living, but it's this kind of meager existence that is kind of hunched up against the elements, the, the safety of this rock. And I'm probably going to build this rock and all the parts into it. So, you know, we may have other elements like barnacles that are just so crusted into this thing that it's just totally entrenched in that wall, right? Now, I don't want this to look like a totally horrible place to live. It has to still feel like the idyllic spot that you start from. So I want to kind of pull out some of these things symbolically, but um, I'll probably back off on some of them as they start to get too strong and, you know, maybe change the lighting a little bit so that it seems like it's a nice place. It's just obviously not the final place. It's not the, you can see why Peter would be interested in this as opposed to this. So maybe this will be comfortable and maybe at the most comfortable, but it'll feel meager. And at this point, I'm, I'm still not trying to think in terms of color. I'm just placing stuff so that I can kind of tell what's going on. I don't, so these greens don't take that to mean anything. I was just thinking it'd be nice to have some kind of barrier, and I can't decide whether that would be an organic thing or what. I'm mostly just using the color as a way to separate the fields of the piece. By the way, I squashed the whole thing just because I felt like the whole thing was getting too close to that bottom edge. I liked the size of it relative to the whole piece. So I'm probably going to create a path somewhere here, something that leads away and kind of pulls you back this direction, right? But I'm going to make it so that the path kind of gets obscured in parts here or maybe even broken down. What brook are you using right now? This is the Pencil Black 2. And is that in your tool set? Uh-huh. Yeah, I like this brush because it's kind of a 
quick way to get a gradient if I want it. I can use it as a soft brush or as a hard brush. So I'm. this is just showing how I would explore it. If I was doing this on paper, I obviously wouldn't be using the colors, but I'd be doing it much the same way, just kind of blocking in big areas and, you know, thumbnailing. Um, but if I was doing, say, like a character-driven piece, you know, when I say character, I mean like a tree, I would probably work on the tree as a character design by itself. more by itself. So that would, you know, this is more of the concept prototyping that I talked about, and, you know, you may want to do the... Um, I, I don't, like, evolutionary prototyping would be fine if you just want to keep working on it like this. But um, throwaway prototyping is fine for stuff like if you have one particular element that's important and you just want to design that on its own and then figure out how it integrates with the whole piece, you can do that. That would be fine. I think we're maybe working on a few different ideas of what to do. Just trying to kind of yeah. good exploratory, good yeah. steps. Yeah, so if you did turn in something like this, make sure that it's a little bit better described than this. Just, uh, you know, for me, this is exploratory, and I'm trying to figure out the composition and the feeling overall. I would, after this, go in and define some of this stuff just a little bit more so you could tell what it was. It, it doesn't have to be nice. It just has to be descriptive. Okay. okay. All right, so I think I'm just about battery, out of batteries and we're just about out of time, so unless there's any more questions, let's call that it. Yes, Kate? Um, what's the command key for the um, thing? Uh, it's command shift F or control shift F. If you're, on a, if, if you're on a PC, it would be control or command on a Mac. Okay. 